Okay, let's take a look at a few examples of solving higher degree equations. And I've kind of let the cat out of the bag here uh, by a particular technique, namely factoring. Okay, so example number one. Suppose we have x to the fifth minus 8x squared equals zero. Okay, so what can we do with this? Notice that we have a zero on one side. We've seen this before in solving some simple quadratic equations. With this zero on one side, if I can factor the other side, express this as a product of two things, then one of those two things must be zero. Okay, and we can use that to reduce the complexity of this problem. How would that work out here? Well, let's factor things. Let's break this apart. Um, first, we should look for a common monomial, and sure enough, we have one. X squared is over here. X squared is part of this as well. So let's pull out X squared, and that's going to leave what? X squared times what gives you X to the fifth? That would be X to the third. X squared times what gives you negative 8X squared? Well, that would be negative 8. Okay, And so we have this uh, breaking into two factors on the left-hand side. So either this has to be 0 or this has to be 0. Okay, And we can even write that. x squared must be 0 or x cubed minus 8 equals 0. The first case, x squared equals 0, that's pretty simple, right? This is a quadratic equation in its own right, but it's a very, very simple one. The only thing you can square at 0 is 0 itself. Or, we still land in this case. Now here we have a cubic. If we had a general cubic over here, with some quadratic terms and linear terms and a constant and so forth, we might be tempted to try factoring it again, to try to factor this original expression completely, but in this case that's not necessary, is it? Can we solve this? Sure, there's only one occurrence of x in the equation, and that generally makes things really, really easy. We just have to uh, undo the things that are happening to x. First we're cubing it, then we're subtracting 8, so let's deal with the subtraction of 8 first. Let's add 8 to both sides to undo that. And then of course, uh, to undo the cubing, take a cube root. So if this is true, x must be 2. And again, that was the second of two possibilities. Okay, so those are our possible solutions to this equation. All right, example number 2. Suppose we had x cubed plus 3x squared is equal to x plus 3. All right, can we do the same thing we did over here? Well, yes, but we do require uh, a little prep work, right? The only reason factoring the left-hand side helped us out was because of this zero. We don't have a zero on one side, but that's really easy to manufacture, right? Just take everything to the other side. So we could say, well, this is x cubed plus 3x squared, subtracting x from both sides, minus x, Subtracting 3 from both sides, minus 3 equals 0. Okay, now we've got the 0 on one side that we wish to see. It remains, however, to factor the other side. Now we would check, of course, for a common monomial factor, but there doesn't appear to be one, right? X is not here, 3 is not on either one of those. Uh, if it was a trinomial, we might try to reverse the FOIL process. We might check for special products. Of course, the only one this might possibly fit would be the uh, cube of a binomial. Uh, that certainly is a perfect cube, but that one's not. Right? That's what we would check for in initially, and then make sure the middle terms work out right as well. So that doesn't work. We do have an even number of terms here. We could try factoring by grouping. What if we looked at the first two terms? Could we pull anything out of those terms? Well, sure, x squared. What's left? x squared times what gives you x cubed? That'd be a single x. x squared times what gives you positive 3x squared? That'd be a plus 3. What about the last terms? 
If this is going to work out nice, we would really like to see an x plus 3 here, right? A common x plus 3 that we'll eventually be able to pull off. Is there anything I can put in that blank right there to make that agree with what we have above? Sure. A negative 1 will work. All right. So negative x minus 3. There we go. Upon now seeing this common x plus 3, I can factor it out. And I'm left with x plus 3 times what? x squared. And x plus 3 times what? Negative 1. Okay. So here again, I've got a product of two factors equaling 0. Either this one or this one must be 0 for that to happen. This one's easily enough dealt with. If x plus 3 equals 0, then x is going to be negative 3, right? Subtract 3 from both sides. Or the other factor, x squared minus 1, had better be 0. Here again, this is a, a quick one to do, especially since uh, there's only one occurrence of x in the equation. We could say x squared equals 1, and then x is, now be careful, that's an even power, plus or minus 1. Alternatively, uh, we could have, because it's just a difference of squares, and that's immediately obvious, hopefully, we could factor it further into x plus 1, x minus 1 equals 0. And then say, well, if that product is equal to 0, one of those two factors must be 0. And so x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. And again, we're left with x equals plus or minus 1 as the two solutions there. So either way you want to go is fine. Okay, so that is our total solution. Uh, x equals plus or minus 1 from here, or negative 3. Okay. Let's look at one more example. How about x to the 4th minus 7x squared plus 12 is 0. Okay. Here again, we have the zero on one side that we wish to see. It just remains to factor the other side so that we can consider what happens when each factor is zero. So notice, of course, there's nothing common I can pull out here. It doesn't appear to fit any special product rules. Um, possibly we look at the square of a binomial. This, of course, is the square of something. But this is not the square of something convenient, something nice. And the middle term probably doesn't work out either. Um, we have three terms. We might try reversing the FOIL process. Treat this kind of like a quadratic. In fact, it seems to have that form, right? You have a constant term on the end. You have uh, some number of something, in this case x squared. And then over here you have some number of that thing squared. x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. With that in mind, let's try x squared here and here. Just as if we saw x squared, we might try x and x. Then to get the 12, we have several different possibilities, right? We have 1 and 12. We have 2 and 6. We have 3 and 4, right, in terms of just the magnitudes involved. Some of those might be positive, some of those might be negative. Of course, this guy right here tells us we're looking at the same sign on both numbers that we're going to place here. Can you take any pair listed here and either add and sub or subtract to get a 7? Sure. 3 and 4 looks like it'll work. Of course, they have to be the same sign, and they have to give us a negative 7. So that means they must both be negative. Okay. So what was the strategy? write this as a product equal to zero, the only way that happens is if one of the two factors, or both possibly, not here of course, if one of the two factors is zero. So either x squared minus 3 equals zero, or x squared minus 4 equals zero. Okay, Here again, you're down to equations that only have one occurrence of x. You can solve for these guys uh, directly. Uh, let's add the 3 to both sides here to get rid of it. 
and take a square root. Remember that's an even power, so this is going to give us two possibilities, plus or minus the square root of three. Here we could do exactly the same thing, take the four to the other side, take a square root plus or minus. Although alternatively, you might see, hey, wait a minute, this is a difference of squares. This is x minus two times x plus two. So either x minus two equals zero, or x plus two equals zero, which tells you x equals two or x equals negative two. Either way, you're gonna get plus or minus two as an answer for that possibility. So putting it all together, x equals plus or minus the square root of three or plus or minus two. Okay, and that's it.